This final video introducing cognitive work analysis focuses on the applications in real world settings. I'll be talking about some of the projects that I've applied cognitive work analysis to in the past and really focusing on the value that the technique has added. Some of these images may seem familiar from the first video. And basically I found that applying the tools and techniques I've been able to use cognitive work analysis for dynamic interface design, allocation of function, training, design for adaptation, developing design guidance, and evaluation of C2 digitization and other systems. Many a time we find that the benefits of these tools and techniques are quite serendipitous. We may set out with one intention and find that they're very useful for another. And this was particularly apparent in the study of the Apache mission planning system. One of the main benefits of this technique was that it provided a common language between the subject matter experts and the people conducting the analysis. We were able to generate very concise descriptions of the constraints framing the environment and represent these graphically. These graphical representations formed discussions and they allowed us to communicate um, distributed across different parts of the country. The feedback we got from some of the subject matter experts who used these tools and techniques with us to develop these models was that the understanding gain has had a significant influence on the, the design of the next generation software. Again, as I spoke about previously, this serendipitous uh, benefit of the tool was that the understanding at different levels of abstraction led to a change in the way that they actually trained um, the mission planning activity to junior aircrew. What was found that was rather than focusing at a process level, thinking at more at a domain function level was seemed to be a much more um, conducive approach for training. The approach we developed has also been applied um, across a number of different domains. Another domain which we applied the cognitive work analysis tool was the um, evaluation of a command and control digitization system. This system has been recently implemented to both battery group and brigade and serves as a communication um, both digitally and said passing data packages as well as voice communication. We were asked to come in and study how the introduction of this system had affected high order descriptions of domain purpose. So using the abstraction hierarchy, we modelled the domain in terms of its overall purpose, the values, the domain functions, the physical functions and the physical affordances of the system. We then evaluated the system against its predecessor and what we found was we were able to make clear links between parts of the system that were performing well and the high level descriptions at the, at the domain level and also describe where the system wasn't performing quite so well. The benefit of this project using cognitive work analysis was a significant impact on the development of future command and control systems. And also we developed an approach that can be applied quite quickly um, and it's been adopted by a number of different companies who have applied it around the globe in different settings. Another approach you have cognitive work analysis for is looking at decision making within complex environments, in this case tank combat ID. Here we studied um, the decision making activity, but again not from a, a process of what people are doing, what people should be doing, but focusing on the constraints that shape the way people can make decisions in the environment. We developed a technique that looks at determining what the alerts are that can indicate how a decision is made, what information elements exist in the world, how the system states can be derived from these, right the way down to the way a process of a decision is made. The benefits of this were reported from um, the trainers who we discussed this with to be a great benefit in training combat ID, exposing uh, novice recruits to the benefits of thinking beyond the obvious salient cues in the environment to think about things, other things that may give them information about what the target is they're looking at. 
There's also benefits in thinking about the way new technology implemented into the tank may change the decision-making activity, and also a review of standard operating procedures. We looked at interface design as a, one of the main outputs of cognitive work analysis. In a theoretical study, we looked at developing a small command and control uh, environment and we developed an abstraction hierarchy describing how this, this environment might function. We then generated a number of displays at different levels of abstraction. At the highest level of abstraction, we started thinking about what the commander might need, what the information he may, may need to, do, to determine what the system should look like, how to coordinate and control uh, the environment. And on the individual level, at the much more uh, physical level, we can see some of the handheld devices showing a very different data set but still representing the same work domain. At a more applied setting, we have to interface design at multi agency disaster planning. Here we studied the domain, listing the physical objects that exist across a whole number of different organisations, what they can perform, what functions these are performing and the overall values that the different organisations have towards uh, disaster management. What we found is there were many physical constraints that meant that different organisations had different priorities, different capabilities and different resources. This was not always well understood within the organisations that were developed in an ad hoc basis. We therefore generated a number of representations that communicated some of this information and shared information on simple whiteboards that could be put on uh, ad hoc command room walls. These products are well received uh, by the multi-agency planning teams, especially uh, a form that was used to communicate um, ideas from one part of the system to the other in a standard format. Another one of the, one of the uh, benefits of cognitive work analysis is addressing allocation of function. Here we looked at developing a dynamic allocation of function interfaces that showed how a system could be rapidly reconfigured in real time and how the interfaces could be changed to show how these changes were affecting the system. The final part of this presentation um, is uses a signpost to show you where you can get more information if you choose to follow cognitive work analysis further and, and choose to apply it to some projects. There are a number of texts out there. Uh, the first of these was developed in 1994 by Jens Rasmussen and this is really the first text on cognitive work analysis, although it's titled Cognitive Systems Engineering. Five years later in 1999, Kim Vicente wrote a book titled Cognitive Work Analysis that took many of the ideas one step further and described them in uh, that was a little more palatable. In 2004, an EID book came out which again describes many of the theories between cognitive work analysis but in a much smaller scope. In 2009, I developed a book called Cognitive Work Analysis, Coping with Complexity. This book really covers, um, goes back to the roots of more of Jens Rasmussen's work and tries to make it a little bit more procedural so other people can apply the technique without having to be uh, mentored to uh, an expert. The book has been very well received by some of my peers. In addition, there's a Cognitive Work Analysis tool out there. This allows you to generate some of the products a little bit easier and provide some guidance along the way. Again, the tool has been well received by my peers and is currently being used uh, globally by a number of institutions and companies. Finally, if you have any questions or you'd just like to find out a little bit more, please feel free to email me, dunjenkins at sociotechnicsolutions.com. Thanks for listening.